So Robert Downey Jr. came back as Dr. Doom. Man, get out of here. Man, I, I saw the a, a rumor about that a couple weeks ago, and I did not believe it. I could not believe that. And I'm like, come on, man. And then I found out, well, I think it was like a what if, part of the what if series in the comics where um, Tony Stark, he was roommates with Victor Von Doom and somehow Tony Stark, he ended up taking over Dr. Doom's body or taking over his mind or something like that. So I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm like, they, 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 they're not going to do that. Robert Downey Jr. is not about to come back for that. And boom, he came back for that. So, you know, when when I, when, you know, say, man, when y'all be telling me I say ridiculous stuff about like Denzel Washington becoming T'Challa or Derek Luke or Daniel Ezra or just the mere fact that I'm thinking about that they're going to think I'm thinking that they're going to eventually recast T'Challa. And y'all saying, oh, man, you got to close the book on that. That ain't going to happen. Chadwick Boseman died, so they can't recast it. So it's like whenever y'all say and think that I'm thinking ridiculous on that part, like, this don't sound ridiculous to y'all. Like, I'm still going to watch the movie to see if it's good or not. I mean, you know, but that is quite interesting. You know, and it has me thinking about a whole bunch of things. Got a whole bunch of whole new set of theories going on in my mind. Like, for years, for the past couple of years, my Doctor Strange theory was that he's a scroll. And the reason why he told Tony Stark that they only win one out of 14,605 battles versus Thanos is because Doctor Strange was a scroll. And he and he knew in that particular scenario, Tony Stark would be out the way and the scrolls can take over. And then you see Secret Invasion. You see that um, Talo said that there's. There's over a million scrolls on Earth, which shocked the hell out of Nick Fury. But, you know, Tony Stark and, well, Dr. Doom did create, I think both of them, they created like a scroll tracker or something like that. But I think Doom had enhanced Tony's invention or something like that or vice versa. That's, that's how it was in the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Hero series. I'm not sure how it was in the comic, but if you know, please share your, share in the comments right there. But um, I don't know. So now this is the first time in a long time where I'm starting to doubt that that Doctor Strange was a scroll. I still think there is a Doctor Strange scroll out there. Scroll. But the one in Endgame, I think that was the real Doctor Strange. And I think in that situation, he saw that Tony Stark eventually was going to turn into doom all right and the way i look at it he saw that as someone being either equivalent or worse than thanos all right in the comic there's a part where thanos and dr doom they they run up on each other and doom just psh, destroys them but this is thanos without the infinity gauntlet of course but um, let me see. The thing about it with Doctor Doom is that I didn't really, I wasn't a big fan of Doctor Doom until I played the um, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance video game, and I saw what he was doing to Colossus and Cyclops, and how the fact that all these MCU, these Marvel superheroes, have to get together and join forces to stop this dude. And I'm like, man, Doom go hard like that? I mean, I watched the Fantastic Four animated series. I didn't really like it. And so I didn't really pay much attention to to that to him in that show. And what else I saw, man? He was in, in some episodes of, of Spider-Man, the animated series in the 90s. And, you know, I, I still didn't think, like, he was all that. But after I saw him in Marvel Ultimate Alliance... Oh, man, I'm like, oh, this dude is a menace. He's a menace to to everything. And then Earth's Mighty, Avengers Earth's, Mighty, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, I saw him in there, and I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, that, that dude is, he is no joke. He's nothing to play with. He is nothing to play with, man. So, okay, respect, respect, you know, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. 
<laughs> you know, um, I don't know what is like. I, I got a whole bunch of theories on this, man. I'm glad the Russo brothers are back, but that that's that's just shocking. Robert Downey Jr. came back for that, but it seems like this movie is gonna be like a big, a big long drawn out what if episode, except it's a live action movie because. Yeah, man, that that was a good call by Doctor Strange, man. He is a doctor. You know what I'm saying? And he said, you know what? If if I let them know that there's multiple ways where we defeat Thanos, and and I tell Tony Stark and I reveal that, hey man, you're gonna become this dude here, this menace, that you know, you're gonna call you're gonna cause doomsday. Well, you know, Tony Stark is like, man, I could think of ways around that. I can prevent that, man. I am a futurist. Tony Stark is a futurist. So, Dr. Doom knew that, hey, um, no matter what, that event, it was inevitable that Tony Stark was going to become that. Now, maybe if he would have broadened out his, his view, his scope to um, 15 to 17 or 20 million <laughs> battles against Thanos. And then maybe he doesn't become um, Dr. Doom, you know, but it's one of those things. It's like, come on, man, 14 million, 605. I mean, Dr. Strange, he was looking out for the entire world, the entire universe, even though we still had to go through a five year um, blip. Right. But it goes to show you like, damn, things could have been worse. And those questions are going to get answered in Avengers Doomsday. Or is it called Doom War? One, Doomsday. Now, you can, you may call me selfish on this, but I could care less. But, yeah, man, um, we got to have a T'Challa in this story. I'm not saying you need T'Challa to make this successful. But if I think if you want it to be very epic right and maximize the amount of money that you can make off this and the maximized amount of awesomeness this movie can be you gotta have T'Challa in there you can have Shuri in there too that's fine you can have both of them as Black Panther but you gotta have T'Challa in that cause there's a lot of history with T'Challa and Doom because in that scenario there is another, this is going to be in a different timeline or a different earth. Well, there, all of the, the all of the T'Challas can't be dead. That No, that's not how it works. Because they eventually are going to go to Secret Wars. And in the Secret Wars comic, I do recall T'Challa having that, um, that Infinity Gauntlet. So yeah, you gotta bring T'Challa in. And and when I think about it, now, like I say, at first I was more trying to cast a younger T'Challa. That's why I, I was thinking Daniel Ezra, Corey Hawkins. But when I think about it, okay, well, Chadwick Boseman, born in 77, so by the time this movie would come out, he would have been like 48, 49, depending on which month of the year it came out. But you know, he didn't look 49. He didn't look like he was in his 40s when Black Panther came out. To me, he didn't. You know, and from my understanding, I think that T'Challa is supposed to be in his early 30s. Now, I like Corey Hawkins, Daniel Ezra, John David Washington, Yaline Noel. You know, I, you know, but I, but man, don't. Those are some good actors. Oh, uh, Aldis Hodge. You know, I think... You know what? It might end up being Aldis Hodge, to be quite honest with you. Because, like I say, I, I keep repeating this. Black Adam seems like that was an audition for him to be T'Challa. You know, that's the silver lining of Black Adam, the Black Adam movie. But you, you, you got to... Um, T'Challa is important to this storyline. And, and I think it would be real, totally, totally awesome if they, if they recast T'Challa, and they include him in that storyline. And of course, Fantastic Four. You know, I'm interested in seeing what 
Pedro Pascal, dude. I'm interested in seeing what he does. He's a good actor. Um, the first movie I seen him in, well, the first thing I seen him in was Game of Thrones. He was the Viper. And see, it's hard watching that dude in anything, and for me, and not think of, and, and I keep saying, man, you had him. You had the mountain. You had him, but you kept playing around. Hopefully, his version of Reed Richards, he's not playing around like that. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, but, yeah, got doomed, man. Man, that's... So there goes my um, Zach Efron being Dr. Doom theory thrown out the window. <laughs> or maybe he's going to be a variant, but I had him as the as Dr. Doom for the MCU. But um, I was... I was standing on 10 toes on that, man, on that theory for about, what were we in, 2024? I think that was about three years ago. When did I start my YouTube channel? About three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. So, I guess that's not going to happen. But, man, Robert Downey Jr., man, dude's going to be 61 years old when that movie comes out. Man, I'm not an ages. I'm just saying. So makes me think. Also, you know what? Hey, Mahershala Ali. It, they they might not end up doing a Blade movie. If you saw Deadpool three, Deadpool and Wolverine, Wolverine and Deadpool. If you saw that movie or you saw or you heard about what happened, I mean, it might not be a Mahershala Ali as Blade. But see, that's where you pivot, because you're a two time, not a one time. But a two-time Academy Award winner, I think playing the role of T'Challa right now is more important than playing the role of than playing the role of Blade right now. That's my opinion on that. And I think you there's a lot of room for you to have more impact on the on on the MCU by you by Mahershala Ali playing T'Challa. Spec you know he, Mahersha Ali, Robert Downey Jr. going, man. Let me see in the comics. Um, Reed Richards and, excuse me, and T'Challa, they, they were good friends, best of friends, you know, so best colleagues and stuff. They worked with each other plenty of times. So you mean tell me, hey, you get, a, you get an Avengers movie that's led by Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom. Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, and Mahershala Ali as T'Challa. I'm not saying they're going to be the only three leads. Of course, you're going to have Chris Hemsworth back, I believe. Uh, Mark Ruffalo back as Hulk. You know, they bring the whole gang back. But, you know, that's 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 a lot. Because I think, yeah, Secret Wars is going to come out in 27, 27 the next year. So, And I'm guessing each movie is going to be about three three and a half hours long i will watch that you know another theory that i'm thinking about you know they're coming out with the whole captain america series where he's supposed to, well this is a rumor where he's supposed to be on his journey to return the infinity stones back through time so what if something he's done might have caused the whole tony stark becoming doom but i don't know that project hasn't been confirmed yet but I'm going to stick with the fact that the good doctor, Dr. Strange, <laughs> he made the ultimate judgment call for the multiverse, for everyone. Well, especially in his universe. And you know what? That might be why. Um, what's Charlize Theron character at the end of Dr. Strange and the multiverse where she says, hey, man, you know, she was upset at him. You know, you cause all these incursions and stuff, maybe because. The Doom variants, they were like, hold up. There's a universe where one of my variants didn't succeed. And the only thing that stopped him from succeeding is because they killed him. Oh, well, we got to figure something out. Well, you know what? I'm going to have to go, you know, with one of Doom's variants. It's going to be like, since we don't have a Doom taking over in that universe, we, we can go cause an incursion and that Doom variant takes over too. So that way, <laughs> a Doom, there's Doomsday in 14,605,000 um, Earths or universes or whatever, however you want to call it. But, man, that's, 
that's dope, man. That's dope. I mean, you know. But what we're gonna see what it do, man. I'm I'm definitely gonna be following this. As you can see, I did a whole bunch of shorts on this and I was about to go to bed, but then I thought about that. And I'm like, oh, that's why that's why Doctor Strange said, Hey man, it's only one scenario. We only win one. And he kept it with a serious straight face. We only win one. So that way he um was able to project nothing but seriousness and no doubt that it's absolute that hey bro I, I saw one scenario now tony stark has no proof that dr strange only saw one scenario but you know he see him going doing all that and he's like okay so that's interesting man that's interesting so and they said dr strange supposed to be i mean he he you know he's a, a He's going to be an even major player in the next Avengers movies, like he should. So, you know. But, man, man, I still. Man, I wish Chadwick Boseman was still alive, man, because that. He was going to be just as prominent as Doctor Strange is with all of this, you know. But, you know, we're going to see what happens, man. Share your thoughts. Let me know what y'all think about Robert Downey Jr. playing. Dr. Doom, I was going to say Tony Stark, but man, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I want to know, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out is, so is this Tony Stark? He's still Tony Stark, but he becomes Doom? Or is it is he straight up playing Victor Von Doom? So, but of course, we'll find out more later. But man, I'm glad the Russo brothers are back doing this. Uh, you know, you hear some people that's like, oh, well, it clearly wasn't successful. Well, without Marvel, well. How great has Marvel been without them? And it's fine, you know. Once again, basketball analogy. I'm going to keep bringing this up. Bill Jackson won three championships in a row with the Lakers. Three-peated. A couple years after that, they let him go. They didn't re-sign him back. And then they brought in Rudy Tomjanovich. We didn't get to see what he was going to do as head coach because of health-related reasons. Then they brought in Mike D'Antoni. I think Kurt Rambis one year too. They brought in Mike D'Antoni. And then after that, they was like, hey, Kobe was like, hey, man, I'm trying to win championships. Kobe saw that he couldn't win the championship without Phil Jackson. They called Phil Jackson back up. They win two championships, made it three NBA finals, but they, they won two championships. So that's how I see this right here. You know, I see this relationship like with the Russo brothers and Kevin Feige well heck even Robert Downey Jr. I mean he, Oppenheimer did great but that was a ensemble cast but his movies outside of Marvel they haven't been generating a lot of cash flow or profit not saying they're not good movies but it's just the whole market markability of it and I always thought Robert Downey Jr. was a brilliant actor I mean I, I've been watching Robert Downey Jr. In, in in television and in movies since the 80s, man. So I never thought that he would become a big, big action star. You think about when growing up, you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you saw the Arnold Schwarzeneggers, the, um, the Sylvester Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal, Carl Weathers, Wesley Snipes, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Wesley Snipes. Glad he's back. Blade, man. You know, and you know what? Wesley and Robert Downey Jr., they played in a couple movies together. They were in a couple movies together, man. Um, um, One Night Stand and U.S. Marshals. You know, so. Well, who would have thought, man, those two where it's like, man, um, <laughs> that's Dr. Doom chasing Blade. Or that's Tony Stark chasing Blade, right? But yeah, that's that's wild. But anyway, share your thoughts. Let me know what y'all think about this, man. And please hit that like and subscribe button. And once again, thank you for taking time out of your day. I know y'all are busy. I know y'all are busy. But thank y'all for taking time out of y'all day by giving my little old podcast a listen. All right. Thank y'all. Peace out. Student of Game Podcast. Peace.